Yo, how's it going, folks? It's me again, your boy Tabo, and this is another lesson on SVG for the web. And uh, today we're going to continue with filters. So um, one of the filters that we're going to discuss today is flood. So we're going to start with flood, and I'll show you how flood works. It's uh, pretty simple, really. Um, what it does is that it you can create a color, and then later on with the flood filter, then you can use it in combination with your blend filter but for first i'm going to explain what the flood does so i'll say what the flood flood okay now i'll say x is equal to 10 and then i'll say y is equal to 50. so yeah with the flood filter also has uh, you can translate it with these coordinates so afterwards then you can also give it a size so i'll say width is equal to 200 and then i'll give it also a height of 200 and then result is basically um what the the end effect of the filter so this is what you will get from it and then you can reference this result and use it with in combination with other filters okay so you can just think of it as the output of the filter okay so I'll say I'll call it flood fill you can call it anything you want okay so this is not a fixed name you can just use whatever name you feel comfortable with and then another attribute is flood color now color is just exactly that the color that you want uh, this filter to have so for this one I'm gonna use maroon and uh, if you like you can also use uh, flood opacity that's also another option that you have so it's one of the attributes so I'll say flood opacity and then I'll make that into 0 0.5 okay uh, so now we're gonna close this guy okay so one thing that I also need to do uh, in order to create a filter you actually need to put it inside a filter element so this is what I actually needed to do uh, say ID then I'll give I'm giving basically given this filter a name and then this is what I will reference when I want to use the filter on a shape so I will just reference this ID this ID over here and uh, this is how I will be able to use my filter effect so I'll say filter here and then I'll close it over here I'll say filter okay so this is how you do it so whenever you create a filter you put it inside two filter elements and then inside then you can specify the specific filter that you want to use okay so now that we've done that i'm gonna create outside of the filter then i'm gonna create okay one um last thing that i need to do is create my devs tag so because everything needs to be defined inside the devs so this is an important part of it so i'll say devs we can then in between then i'll take that and just put it inside these tags okay so pretty much all the filters that i'm going to be creating are going to be done inside a devs element okay so now that we're done with that um, i'm gonna create a rect okay so i'll say rect and then i will give it um, an x value of 10 and then i'll give it a y value of 10 also and the width will be 200 so is the height and then I will give it a fill of green even though uh, you're not going to be able to see it because using the flood filter it's just gonna pretty much override this color so it's not really gonna make any difference even if I don't include it so yeah but i'm just gonna put it there anyway just for whatever reason so that when we test out also if this does not work i can still know if it's being drawn or not okay so that's that so i'm using the flood filter so this is how you reference filter well, from the last uh, tutorial you already know how to include a filter in your shape Okay, so now what we're gonna do is then open this up on our favorite browser and check out. Open it over here. Let's close that guy. Okay, so there we go. So this 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 is our 
the filter that we just created. Um, it looks the way that it does because we gave it an opacity of 0 0.5. So if I were to make it 1, if I make the opacity value 1, then this is what it would look like. Okay. And uh, if then I were to remove the filter over here, I'll go back. So this is where originally my other, this is where the original shape is. Okay, over here. Okay, let me check out if my values match. Okay, I made this 50. It should be 10. Okay, so now I will... Okay, since I'd removed the filter, so now I have to do it again. Um, say filter, go to URL, and I'll say flood. Okay, there we go, no biggie. Okay, so that's what it does. Basically, when you use the filter, then it just pretty much overrides the color and then uses this filter, and uh, that's color. Okay, so now what we're going to do is then create another filter so this time we're going to use the flood filter and then we're going to combine it with the blend filter now the blend filter is if you're familiar with any graphical software like photoshop where you have different blend modes uh, like uh, overlay like screen multiply like these kind of uh, blend modes this is what the blend filter does okay so you can basically create these effects with your svg shapes Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna duplicate this in order to save time and so what I'm gonna call this I'm gonna call it blend mode. Okay, so this will be the name of my filter and then um, I will still need a FE flood filter so I will use this one I'll just change the values so I'll say 380. And then I will make uh, this 50 and I'll give it a width of uh, 350 then a height of 350 as well okay so um, the result I will call it flood fill also okay and then uh, the color I will then give it a color of I'll use burly wood I'll say burly wood as my color and then I'll use the flood opacity of one also. And so the next one will be um, blend, FE blend. And then with my blend filter, you have um, an attribute called N. Now basically N is where I will be uh, referencing my source graphic. So what source graphic means is the, the element on which you'll be applying the filter. Okay, so that's what source graphic is. So I'll say N and then source graphic. But you should already know this from the previous tutorial. And so the next one is N2. Now N2, uh, I will be referencing the flood, flood fill. Okay, and then afterwards, then I will choose a mode. So I will use color dodge. Okay, and then afterwards, then I will close the sky. All right. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm here and by N, N2, I'm referencing this, um, the result of this filter over here. Okay. So I'll be using that as my filter. And then here I will basically determine the mode of my blend mode. Okay. Of my blend filter. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I will apply this on an image. So I will create an image element and then I'll say href equals. So this is how I reference an, an image. So I'll say images. This is basically the uh, URL or the file uh, location. I'll say plain, plain dot SVG. So now I'm going to use this logo image as the image that I'm going to test out our filter on. Okay, so it'll be located at uh, this position x 
350 and then uh, y minus 50 and then I will give it a width of I'll say 20% and now we'll give it a height of 20% as well 20% it just means the 20% of the original size of the image that's what it means and so then I will reference my filter I'll say filter URL and then, then I'll say blend mode okay so now let's have a look uh, what that looks like Ooh, crazy what the hell is that well, something is off definitely um, let me just go back okay um I think my problem is with the, the address here so I'll just say um, pray to my script Okay, so there we go. So now um, one thing that I noticed um, is a bit off is, is this over here. Um, make that zero. Okay. Okay, so yeah, here here it is. Um, so now this is my logo and then I will show you what it looks like without this filter. So just so that you can understand what's happening here. So originally here it is. So now I applied the filter and that's what it does. And so I can choose the different blend modes to see the different effects that I can get from it. I'll say screen. Let's see what that does. Okay, it doesn't really do much. Uh, I'll say multiply. Okay, that's what multiply does. And now I'll we'll say uh, lighten. Now these are the different blend modes that you have. So lighten, and then another one would be darken. Say darken. So that's what darken does. So I'll try overlay. Okay. So these are different blend modes that you can play around with. I mean, you can also change the color. It doesn't have to be burly word. You can say orange and then see what kind of effect, also. what kind of effect you get from it. This is what you get with orange. And then if you want it, um, it's a screen. Let's see what, oh, Man. see. So you can just play around with these values and then see what kind of cool things you can get and uh, yeah so that's pretty much that and so the next filter that we're going to create is okay we're going to create a diffuse lighting uh, filter okay so once again I'm just going to copy this um, yeah what a diffuse lighting filter does it work similar to like shaders i don't know if any of you guys might know anything about shaders or how they work but it it basically influences how an object uh, receives light or how the light behaves so if you can think about objects in, in real life um when they're hit by light how the light interacts with objects and um, how basically uh, an object or a particular material absorbs light or reflects light so it depends on um, the use case so diffuse light is just basically plain uh, light with no uh, reflections or anything like that just how an object receives light so you can use a filter or the diffuse filter to control how you want light to be reflected on an object okay so let's just um, create our filter so um, I'm gonna remove these two so I'll just automatically uh, give it a name so I want this to be a diffuse light okay so that's the name of our filter so here I'm gonna say FE and then I'll say diffuse lighting that's the name of our filter and uh, 
This filter also has an in attribute. Once again, this will be using the source graphic. And then we also have a result. So we can name our result and I will call this diffuse. And then another attribute that we have is called a surface scale. Now what surface scale is, it's basically the height of our shape or object. You will later understand what this means, okay, depending on the, the value of the surface scale that will also determine how you will move your light in terms of the Z axis. That's probably, that probably doesn't mean anything to you right now. So I think it's better to just illustrate it so that you have a, a visual reference of what I'm trying to explain. Okay, so the next um, attribute is called diffuse constant. Okay, so we'll make our diffuse constant five and then uh, we have light color attribute. So this is the color of the light. And so I will give it a color of white and then I will close it. Okay, so now we'll create also another closing tag. Um, okay, like that. With diffuse lighting, there are three different types of lights that you can use. So one that we're going to use right now is called point light. Okay, so let me show you what a point light does. Let me say point light. And then um, basically it has an X and Y value. So I'm just going to give it an X value of 100 and Y will be 650 so this is where the light will be shining and then it's also got a, a z axis as well now the z axis is what will better illustrate uh, what i was talking about which is the surface scale your z axis is your depth if you have a surface scale of 40 that means that if your z axis is at 40 then it will be the same as your light being on the ground like flat against the surface where it will not light the surface you cannot see the light because the light and the shape are on the same level so the rays are not hitting the surface from a certain distance so the light cannot actually spread across the surface because they're on the same level if that's a clear explanation but like i said i will illustrate this and i think that will probably uh, make you understand it better okay so now now that i've got this then i'm gonna take this i'm gonna use another uh, filter which is called fe composite fe composite or fe composite however you want to pronounce it it's also got an n uh, attribute and once again we'll be using our source graphic and then for our n2 we'll be using diffuse and so composite has an operator an attribute called operator now this operator has different other values that you can ascribe to it the one that i'm going to use right now is called arithmetic now arithmetic is pretty uh, i think it's easy because um what it what it does is that it will basically translate your wait, just let me, i'll say uh, arith, arithmetic Okay, so when you're using your arithmetic operator, then you also have to use these values. I'll say K1, and then K1 will be equal to 1, and I'll say K2, K2 I'll make it equal to 0, K3 equal to 0, and then K4 also will be equal to 0. Okay, so now we're going to close the sky. Now, composite has many other values that you can use, but what I like about this is that it's uh, pretty simple. Now, these values, um, you can only give a value between 0 and 1 for any one of these attributes. Now, how I can simply explain this is that this would kind of control your light, and this would control like the diffusion okay i don't know if that actually makes sense um but i will illustrate to kind of help you get what that might mean okay so i will i'll create a circle circle i'll say cx 
equals to 150. Let's see, CY equals to 700. Let's say R is equal to 100. I'll give a radius of 100. And I'll say fill it with color magenta. And then I'll say filter. So I'll use my diffuse light. Hey, what the hell? What was that? Okay, and um, I'll do I make the opacity equal to one. Okay, so now let's close this guy off. So okay, there we go. Diffuse light over here. Okay, cool. So let's check it out. There we go. This is my shape. So now let's check out what that looks like without the filter. I'll remove this filter over here. So this is what it originally looks like. Okay, so when I put the filter back, so now you can see the light over here. Now this little round uh, spot over here, you can control it with this value over here, diffuse constant. If I make it one, then you will see it will be smaller. See, now that looks a lot smaller and even how, how it spread. So that controls that. And then this value that I was talking about, surface scale. Now at the moment it's at 43. And uh, as you can see, this, this dot is really small, you know, which means that the light is pretty close to the surface. If you can think of how light works in real life, the further away the light is, then the more the light will be covering the whole shape. Okay, the more the light will be distributed throughout the whole shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll make the surface scale to zero. And let's see what that will do. Okay, ah, you see, because now the surface scale is zero, it means that you can just, I'm making a typical example. This is by no means accurate, but let's just assume that this was centimeters, right? Like the, these were the units. So that would mean that the surface scale is at zero centimeters and this would be at 43 centimeters. So that means that the light is basically 43 centimeters away from the surface which is why the light is spreading across the whole shape. So now if I bring the light closer to the, to the shape, then this is how then the shape will be lit. That gives you a clear picture of how this works. That's exactly what it is. So your surface scale will influence your Z uh, axis a lot. Like it will determine what kind of values we can use here, depending on what the surface scale is. So if it's at zero, then it means that, yes, uh, if I put this at one, then nothing is happening because the like at the same level so the light is not hitting the surface and like not even underneath it but just on the same level it's not hitting at the surface if i put it at one then you can see you know this is where the light starts to hit the surface and the more i increase it then you know the more it starts to cover the whole surface so this is what you can do with that uh, and like i said the light constant you can also make that bigger you see so now it's bigger then you can say 10 and you can just keep going on and on as much as you like so that's how that works um, and you can also change the color of your light if you want to so that is all up to you so if I wanted I could make it cyan well okay um the reason why it didn't work is because I yes, misspelled this. So let's go back again. Um, what do I have to change now? Okay, um, so now let's check it out. So this is originally what uh, it looked like. Um, so now I'm gonna change the color over here. Okay, so that's what that does. So now I've got this color, which is pretty cool. You know, um, I can say green 
and let's see what happens there. And let's go back to Cyan. Oh, it seems like there are certain colors which do not respond all that well. Let's see. Um, we'll say orange. Let's see what that looks like. So that's what you get. So greens doesn't seem to respond at all. And maybe green and um, yeah, magenta just don't go together. I will say red. Well, not much difference there. Yeah, let's say yellow. Okay. Okay, yellow also doesn't really make much of a difference. But anyway, you can play around with these different values and then um but you can also mix this with the blend filter. So now I'm just basically going to end this lesson here. For now, this is all I have time for. So yeah, love and peace, my brothers and sisters. Till the next one, I'm out. If you thought this video was good and helpful, please press that like button. For any questions or input, just remember to leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and I'll keep more stuff coming your way.